And we're back. This is Rose Unplugged. Joining me this morning is a branding advisor to CEOs as well as a media commentator. He's got a couple of books, and they are Brand is Destiny, The Ultimate Bottom Line, and Be Unique or Be Ignored, The CEO's Guide to Branding. And boy, I'll tell you what, and more and more, it's so important to find your brand, use that brand. And Mark Rudolph is an expert at that, and he's uh, also going to be talking with us regarding the Pittsburgh Steelers and the NFL in general. Good morning, Mark. How are you? Very well, Rose. How are you? Good. It's great to have you on. You know, this is interesting because, you know, a year ago, almost exactly a year ago, you had a story. This is a crazy 49ers uh, Colin Kaepernick should keep it off the field. You predicted much of what's been happening, what we've been witnessing, particularly in the last few weeks. It's just it's hit its high point. Um, what were some of the things that you knew were going to happen once Colin decided that he was going to take a knee during the national anthem? Well, you have to pardon me. Uh, uh, I'm afflicted with a disease that's called common sense. (laughs) Shame on you. (laughs) Yeah, shame on me. And I saw that if uh, Chip Kelly, who's the head coach of the 49ers, told told the press that I I can't tell Colin Kaepernick what to do, and I'm only the head coach. (sighs) It's not my place to tell him what to do. And then uh, Jed York didn't say anything. He's the owner of the 49ers. And I just said, this is going to get out of hand. It's going to spiral out of control. And and I ended the argument. And what I predicted was, not only is it going to spiral out of control, but it's going to bleed over into other sports. And, of course, it has. Yes. When you allow, it's the same thing as when you raise children. If you don't clamp down, they're just going to keep trying to get away with more and more. And let's face it. They are behaving like children. They really are. And what I said at the end of that article, uh, and by the way, if you want to find me, I'm at markrudov.com. If if you don't take a stand, then you don't have a brand. And that's the thrust of what I'm talking to you about today. The brand of the NFL is cratering because a brand is a customer-validated value proposition it's the connection with the customer and a brand sets the purpose and direction of a company and each team is a company and overall the nfl is a company and by the way it gets a waiver from the government to be a monopoly Uh, but the thing is is that they have all of these rules in the nfl what you can and cannot do with your helmet with your shoes with your uniform with your behavior on the field You can't even use any headphones but Bose headphones. There are very strict rules. And according to the NFL rule book, during the national anthem, you're supposed to stand there silently with your helmet under your left arm. And so to say that they can kneel and violate these rules is ridiculous. Uh, The fact is, is that Roger Goodell is so afraid of his players because 75% of them are black that he wants to be politically correct. And this letter you got from Rooney the other day, I mean, let's face it, the Rooneys have been big supporters of the Democrats. Dan Rooney was an ambassador to Ireland, yeah, big Obama supporter, and it doesn't make any sense what they're doing. When you offend your customers, you tank your business. Now, in that article, I gave an analogy. I said, let's imagine that you stage an anti-abortion rally on the front lawn of your corporate headquarters. Can you imagine that the CEO is just going to look the other way and say, well, certainly not. You, you, you have the right of free speech. Now, the University of Pennsylvania, a few weeks ago, the Annenberg Public Policy Center, released a survey of Americans saying that 40% of Americans do not even know about the First Amendment rights. They don't know anything about it. So when people start throwing this around, why is First Amendment right? You don't have a First Amendment right to say whatever you want to at work. The First Amendment protects you from the government, not from your employer. So it's not a First Amendment issue. At work, your employer has the right to tell you what you can and cannot say. And if you don't like it, you can work somewhere else. But to use your employer's workplace as your personal stage to make a statement Uh, is the antithesis of what you should be doing in your job. And what 
Colin Kaepernick did to start all of this. And by the way, he did it during the Obama administration. Yeah, well, he he didn't like he didn't like Hillary. He didn't like he didn't like anybody. So this isn't. But the, he, point, is, but the point is, they, they let. Can you imagine Chuck Knoll letting any player get away with this? No. Uh, I, I can't. No. But but here's the thing: your brand, as I said before, is your connection with your customers. So what is the brand of football now? Instead of gridiron, you get grievance. People, if people want to see protests, they can just watch the news. Yeah. And they can see another riot at Berkeley. And it's the same thing in football. And it's the same thing in corporate America. CEOs are bending over backwards to get millennials in and to let them do practically anything they want to do. And so this is a contagious disease all over the country. When, again, I'm coming back to the brand. When you offend your customers, they're going to leave, and the customers of the NFL are leaving. They're voting with their remote controls and their feet. And if you look at stadiums, there are a lot of empty seats now, and people are not tuning into the NFL. Uh, Direct TV is now giving refunds. Yes, I saw that. People who subscribe, who subscribe if, to the Sunday ticket. Yeah, if they say that the reason they they want to cancel their subscription is because of uh, the players and what they're doing, they they absolutely can cancel. Isn't that amazing? Uh, it, why? It, it Let me ask you this though. Never done this why, since you've worked with CEOs and so forth, you understand how they think. Why would anyone? Why, when when Art Rooney sends us a, a letter and tells us that there was a misperception, that's BS. There was no misperception. There was a miscalculation on your part, but we perceived it precisely as it for what it was. Why? What why is that did these, letter really? That letter is called political correctness. Yeah, but and it's also trying to explain away. They know that they're in trouble now. They know they're in trouble right. now. Yeah, and political correctness and branding do not mix. And this is a lesson for every CEO listening right now, whether you're the CEO of somebody else's company or your own company. If you turn your company into a stage for social justice, you're going to lose business. Uh, this woman I, I just saw last night, though, she runs Steel City Sports. She sells paraphernalia for the Penguins and the Pirates and the Steelers. She said people are boycotting her store now. They're so angry. Now, Roger Goodell does not care about his players. Look what happened when Bennett Amalu discovered CTE. Roger Goodell was the first one to shut him down. He didn't want to hear about it. So to say that he cares about his players, he doesn't. And he doesn't care about them now. He cares about the quick buck. But it always backfires. It does. And I can't believe they are that stupid that they don't understand it well. They are that stupid. And this is what the disease of political correctness will do. It will make you stupid. And so the fundamentals of business are never going to change. I don't care what era we're talking about. So if you decide that it's okay for your employees to stage social justice rallies or whatever, you're going to lose. People do not want this. They tune in for entertainment and for exhilaration. They don't tune in to be lectured to, and again, if the owners of the 49ers had had shut down Colin Kaepernick, none of this ever would have happened. Agreed, agreed. It spiraled out of control. The people who were protesting, I mean, look at what happened in London. The Jaguars and the Ravens were over there in England on foreign soil, and they knelt for the national anthem and stood for God Save the Queen. My God. So they're hip, as if they don't even know the history of England. I so they don't even what, know what idiots! Protesting. What idiots! The, My God! But the point, yeah. But the point is, is that, and, and this is why branding is so important. And by the way, I've written articles about Trump and branding, and how he has a problem with messaging. One day he says one thing, the next day he says something else. He claims that the uh, transsexuals can't be in the, the the military, and the next day his generals say that's not true. You can't have mixed messages. You have to be consistent. And so now what the NFL owners are doing is they're being weasels and wimps, and they're mealy-mouthed, and they're, they're, they're just, they can't take a stand, and they're afraid of offending everybody. And when you're afraid of offending everybody, you do offend everybody. And so that's not what branding's all about. Branding, out, you must be able to take a stand, and you must stick with it, and you must make sure that what you're saying and what you're doing resonates 
with your customers. And if it doesn't, they're going to leave. And that's exactly what's happening. Yeah, that's exactly right. what's happening. And people don't. This is not why people tune into the NFL. So yeah, it's not at all, and they're not going to. I don't know. Do you think they can redeem themselves? For example, the Steelers now supposedly will be coming out and standing for the national anthem from now on. Yeah, I mean, it's just think about it. Think about how ridiculous that is. None of this should have happened. No, it should not have. The only way. The only way this can change, in my opinion is to replace Roger Goodell. And the new guy has to say, okay, enough of this crap. We're going to go back to being regular football. And if you don't want to stand for the national anthem, you wait in the locker room. And when it's the national anthem's over, you come out. And you do not use my workplace as your stage. That's right. You play football, and then you go home. And if you have a gripe with America, you have a lot of money. You hire a press team. Yeah, get out there you and brand the hat. Yeah, you, you make statements that you want to make, to want to make. You write a book. You write an article. You run for office, but yeah. you do it on your own time and on your exactly. own. Exactly, exactly. That's what the, what the owner should be saying, and that's what the commissioner of the NFL should be saying, and that is how that you create and maintain a strong brand. Yeah. Mark Rudolph, I want to spell your name so that people, when they check you out on Twitter, it's at Mark Rudolph. Mark with a C, R-U-D-O-V. Mark Rudolph. Right. The books are Brand is Destiny. We should talk about that sometime. The Ultimate Bottom Line and Be Unique or Be Ignored, the CEO's Guide to Branding. MarkRudolph.com is his website. Thank you for joining us this morning. It's so good to have a Pittsburgh guy on the show. Love it. And it's, thank you very much, Rose. And it's great to be in Pittsburgh, my hometown. So are you here all the time? No, no, no. I come back to visit family every now and then. Okay. I live out of California. Oh, and California. By the, way, the, 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 the book that you mentioned, Brand is Destiny, the ultimate bottom line. As you can see with the NFL, the brand is the ultimate bottom line because look what's happening to the NFL's bottom line. Exactly. Good it's point. Cratering. Exactly. So if you don't have a strong brand, you're going to have a weak bottom line. Yeah, oh, I love it. I love it. Thank you so much for all that you do. Thank you. My pleasure. All right. Come back. Let's come back. Let's talk about Donald Trump and his branding or something. We'll figure it out.